How to play Calcusone. Ages 13 and up, 2 to 5 players, playtime 30 to 45 minutes. In Carcassonne, players take turns drawing land tiles and placing them next to other tiles, while also laying down followers to score points for completed roads, cities, monasteries, and fields. After all land tiles have been placed, the game ends and whoever has the most points wins. Zit up! Each player collects 8 followers and places one on the scoreboard and the remaining 7 in front of her. Place the starting land tile, which is signified by a darker shade of gray, on the back. Ten of a view. Draw and place a land tile. Draw a land tile face up, then place it next to a previously laid tile. Land tiles must be placed orthogonally adjacent to another tile, not diagonally. Depending on the tile, you will have a few options when placing it. You could connect a city, but not like this. A road, but not like that either. A monastery, all right, you're just messing with me, right? Or a field. Okay, I give up. Tutorial over. In the rare case that you draw a land tile but cannot connect it anywhere, throw it on the ground and leave it in a fit of rage. Or you could just simply place it in the box until the next game. Place the follower. After you place your land tile, you have the option to place one of your followers on that tile. However, you cannot place your follower on a previously laid tile. You can place your follower on one of the following places. On a city, making your follower a knight. A road, making her a thief. A field, making him a farmer. Or on a monastery, making her a monk. Note that you may not place your follower anywhere that has a connecting road, city, or field with another follower on it already. However, you could place your tile over here, add your follower, connecting the cities later, therefore sharing the whole city with another follower. You could do the same with roads and fields too. Strategeries. Scoring the points. Throughout the game, you will be able to score points for completed cities, roads, and monasteries. Sorry, fields, you gotta wait until the end of the game. Oh. You will keep score throughout the game using the provided scoreboard. When you complete a city, you get two points per tile plus two points per banner. That's that shield looking thing. Then take your follower back into your supply. When you complete a road, score one point per tile, then take your follower back. When you completely surround a monastery, you score nine points and then take your follower back as well. Ends of the game. After all the land tiles have been placed, the game ends immediately. If you didn't get to finish your cities, roads, or monasteries, don't worry. You'll still get points, just not as many. Incomplete cities score one point per tile and one point per banner. Incomplete roads score one point per tile. Incomplete monasteries score one point per tile as well. And finally, fields. Here's your chance to shine. For each field you control, score three points per completed city that it touches. It is important to pay attention to who controls the fields because they could sneak up and defeat you in the end. After scoring everything and moving your followers up the scoreboard track, whoever has the most points wins. Yay! Thin. If you found this tutorial helpful, please subscribe below and share it with your friends. If you like to look at pictures, follow Board Game Tutorials on Instagram. Don't follow us on Twitter, because we aren't on Twitter. Ain't got no time for that. Bye!